It's Wednesday, March 20, 2024, and it is the day two of the NCAA tournament. So you know what that means. I've got to cover the other first four games. You want to find out what I'm taking? Let's go. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Noble Living, back with another DYF Bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day as we just try to get to bag together and make some money. Yesterday, ugh, not the way we want to start off March Madness at all. 0-2, actually 0-3 on the day. We lost on Virginia spread. I mean, Virginia, I don't know what that was. It looked like a high school JV team out there. They couldn't score at all. It was ridiculous. I mean, it's kind of hard to handicap a team that's not hitting any points. So we lose there. We lost on the Howard and Wagner under as those teams were starting to hit shots hard in the second half. And then Howard, they fought back, but they could not get the tie there late night. They had two opportunities late in the game to tie the game, but they couldn't. So they make us lose on the money line parlay as well. So 0-3 on the day. We do have one bet pen with our Akron bet that's going to be coming up on Thursday but it's okay we have a long March Madness stick with me my friends we've got a ton of games especially on Thursday and Friday so this is a slow start but it's not about how we start it's about how we finish look at our year today record right here okay we've been killing it in the month of March we're still over 500 we're still doing good on the year so stick with me my friends we still have a long March Madness tournament we're just getting started baby so trust me I've got three best bets for you guys two in today's games and then one for tomorrow so trust me we're going to be able to start off the tournament the absolute right way and if you want to join these videos can you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because i promise you we're going to continue to cash now let's dive into these best bets for our first best bet of the day, we're going to head to the first four matchups. I think that everybody's anticipating and wanting to watch. That's that Colorado and Boise State game. And I truthfully, guys, you probably know where I'm going to go with this one. We're going to run it back like we did yesterday. we got to go with the favorite in this matchup. And I'm going to go Colorado Buffs, minus 2.5, minus 110 odds. Now, I really like Colorado in this matchup because they just are really battle-tested. This team has plays really well. They almost won the Pac-12 championship there. They lost to Oregon. And for me, that was a game that we were on Oregon. But that's just because the situation was more in Oregon's favor. I think Colorado was a lock to get into the tournament. They were on the bubble, but they finished off the regular season the way that we wanted to see it. They won six straight games to end the regular season. They beat USC on the road. They beat Utah. They beat Cal. They beat Oregon. They beat Oregon State. So they had some pretty good wins going down the stretch of the regular season. They also picked up two conference wins in the tournament, beating Utah and a very good Washington State team before losing to Oregon in the championship game. Now, the reason why we took Oregon in that championship game was because if Oregon did not win that game they were not getting into the tournament so there was a lot more at stake for that Oregon team and I think they matched up really well with Colorado because Oregon has the size and the three-point shooting that can kind of counteract what Colorado does best now Colorado is a really good three-point shooting team and they're just really good on the offensive side of the ball 25th in offensive adjusted efficiency 18th in effective field goal percentage they're the number five team in the country when it comes down to three-point shooting on from behind the line so you love to see that and now they're going against a Boise State team that is strong defensively 28th in defensive efficiency and they guard the three-point line 23rd but this is the thing right Boise State does not guard the two-point line really well 259th in two-point percentage and even though Colorado does have a very high three-point percentage from the field they don't shoot a ton of three-pointers the majority of their shots come on the inside of the line and that to me is going to be the big difference in this game now Colorado also has a lot of great Great players like KJ Simpson, Tristan De Selva, Eddie Lampkin. These are all guys who can kill you. These are all guys who can take over a game. And this Colorado team, they've been on the bubble for most of the year because they've been suffering and dealing with so many injuries. If they did not have the injuries that they were dealing with, again, I think they would have been a sure lock into the tournament. And I think both of these teams actually deserve to not be playing this first four matchup. But here, here we are, right? And because of that, I think that this is matchup again favors Colorado. Boise State did not go far in their conference tournament. They lost to New Mexico straight out by 10 points. 76 to 66 and they also lost to Nevada to end the regular season 76 against 66 and that game was at home but you know this Boise State team does have some big, big wins two wins against San Diego State they beat Nevada on the road earlier in conference play we saw them beat VCU in the non-conference schedule and also with St. Mary's but again I think this is just a matchup here that favors Colorado because of how Colorado can really stretch the floor they have the guard play that can take over this game at any time they also have the size with Lampkin and Tristan De La Silva to be able to stop what Boise State really likes to do, which is push the ball on the inside. Boise State ranks 22nd nationally in the frequency of post-ups and 32nd in efficiency in terms of two-pointers on those plays. So again, they're going to look to kind of put the ball on the inside. They're going to try to look to grind it out, slow down the pace of this game. But for me, I think if you're trying to play a half-court offense style, which Colorado can do, which they like to do, I think that's going to favor Colorado in this matchup. Boise State is also kind of one-dimensional on the defensive side of the ball. They don't like to run a lot of zone 
defense. And a lot of teams have been running zone against Colorado this year. So again, I think that's just a, a matchup, an advantage for Colorado in this matchup. Not overthinking it. I'm just going to go with the better team. I do have Colorado in my bracket winning this matchup. And I also have them beating Florida in the next round as well. So again, let's go to Colorado minus two and a half is our first best bet of the day. For my second best bet of the day, we're going to go to the secondary matchup that's happening in the second first four of the games. We're going to go to the Grambling State and Montana State matchup. And I'm taking Grambling State minus, plus four and a half, minus 120 odds here. The line has moved in favor of Montana State, and I have to respectfully disagree here. Now, you guys know that I have been following the SWAC. If you've been tapped into me when I was doing conference tournaments, we were taking Grambling. We were tailing them several times, and we hit a lot of our SWAC bets. And this is the thing that I really like about this Grambling State team. They prepared for this tournament in the non-conference. Their non-conference schedule, six toughest in all of college basketball. Look at some of the teams they played in the non-conference. Colorado, Iowa State, Dayton, Washington State, Drake, Florida. These are all teams, and that's tough for a, a SWAT team to play all those teams. Now, granted, they lost all those matchups, but again, that is what prepares you for this matchup, and then that also, also prepared them for conference play, where they won nine of their last 11 games. I really say 10 of the last 11, because I'm not really counting that Alabama State game, because they already locked up the number one seed. They lost that game in double overtime, and they already knew where their position was heading into the conference tournament, and in the conference tournament, they didn't play with their food at as well they beat all three of the teams that they faced they covered all three of the games and they smacked texas southern in that championship game 75 66 now it's a texas southern team that has run the swag and who everybody thought was going to go back to the tournament they were actually favored in that game but grambling handled all three of those games so grambling is just in really really good form like i said they've won a they've won 12 of their last 14 games you know, as a whole and i think that's going to be the benefit for them in this matchup because they're used to playing really good competition especially from the non-conference side now, Montana State on the other side, they had to get hot for them to make it to the tournament. They didn't do too good in conference play, only 9-9. Nine and nine. They were about a sixth seed in their conference, but they got hot at the right time in the Big Sky, winning three straight games against Weber State, Sacramento State, and Montana in order to get here today. But I think this matchup, again, favors Grambling State because Montana is just not battle-tested like Grambling State is. If you look at their non-conference schedule, they didn't really play anybody really good. The only team that they played with us in the top 100 of Kempom was Washington, and that Washington team doesn't even look that good at now now that we've finished the season we realize how bad that washington team was now one of the things that montana state does do pretty well is shoot the three-point ball pretty well 42nd ranked in three-point shooting they also ranked 46 in effective field goal percentage but for me i just think that this is going to be a matchup where grambling is scrappy they play tough they're going to hold you to one shot on the defensive side they play slow 316th in tempo 187th on the defensive side and they also don't give up a ton of rebounds as well and that is what montana state doesn't like to do which is they're not going to try to go after the offensive glass they're not going to try to get second possessions and i think that is going to favor grambling state in this matchup who can make a real scrappy now can montana state win this game outright sure but then i'm getting four and a half points here yes and i like that because that's over like kind of my key number of three and a half here so four and a half is not too much i'm back in the swag here and i'm going with grambling state in this matchup they give me the team that's faced much better competition in the non-conference and then also that team that's looking to slow it down and if we get to a half court offense type of game this one is going to be able to benefit grambling because that is what they want to do they want to play slow they want to play you in the half court they want to slow it down and this is a low total already the books have this as a seven eight points lower than what Ken Palm has this at and Ken Palm only has this as a two point loss for grambling state here so i like the fact that we're getting some extra point value here so give me grambling plus four and a half is the second best bet now for third and final best bet of the day we're going to go to and lock in a bet for thursday and we're not going to get the best number because of the injury news that came out and i like this before the injury news but now i for sure like it and we're going to go with sanford plus seven and a half minus 110 odds against kansas i know i'm rocking this kansas jayhawks hat here but this kansas jayhawks team i just don't know i just don't know and then we just got the report yesterday that kevin mccullough is going to miss the ncaa tournament because of the bone bruise in his knee keep in mind that he is the second highest contributor in this team besides hunter dickinson so you're losing Losing literally your best all-around player you're losing the guy that's the second biggest contributor to your team and this kansas team has not been in great form 12 and 22 and 10 on the year that's the most losses that any kansas team has had going into the tournament in the bill self era they lost in the first round to cincinnati in the big 12 tournament okay kevin hunter dickinson and kevin mccullough didn't play so kind of understandable but before that they lost to houston they were able to beat kansas state they lost to baylor and byu so they've literally lost four of their last five games
games. They're not in the best of form. This Kansas team has a lot of question marks around them. And now you've got a Sanford team that's coming into this matchup. 29-5. and five. They ran through the SoCon, winning the SoCon tournament. They only dropped three games in conference. And they have the 8th best 3-point shooting team in the country. 70th best offense in terms of adjusted efficiency. And the 7th best offense in terms of effective field goal percentage. I think that's where the difference is going to be in this game. This is a Sanford team that's going to look to push the tempo. 14th in adjusted tempo right now. In, in the 14th in adjusted tempo, which is one of the fastest in all of college basketball. And they also hit the two-point shot really well. About 20th in college basketball in terms of two-point percentage. This is just way too many points here. I think Kansas is on straight upset alert here. We've seen Bill Self teams lose in the first round, second round in tournaments before. So this is not unexpected to see his team get upset. And now that you're losing your best player in come tournament time and you've already not been in good form without them and with them i'm just not getting it here sanford is a team that can hit a lot of threes if they're hitting their shot it's going to cause a lot of problems for kansas who's not really that best of a three-point shooting team they really like to pound it on the inside 209th in all of college basketball's Kansas from the three-point line. So if you're trading threes for twos, it ain't going to get it done. Just way too many points here. So give me Sanford plus seven and a half. Upset alert. You can even sprinkle some on the money line as I think they could actually beat Kansas out right here in this matchup on Thursday. So give me Sanford as our third and final best bet as a, and another bet for Thursday's card. Well, that's it for me today, my friends. Three best bets, three winners that are headed your way on this college slate. Two in the first four and then one for tomorrow. Give me Colorado minus two and a half. Give me Grambling State plus four and a half. And then also give me Sanford tomorrow at plus seven and a half. For more best bets and picks and plays I'm going to be dropping throughout the day, the NBA spreads are a little bit big right now, but I'll probably find a few player props that I like. Make sure you tap into the free Discord group. Link is in the description. You guys will be able to get those picks and plays. As always, continue to drop your winners below. Let's continue to make money, beat the sports books, and dictate your fate. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Later, gang.